It was on the battlefield once more. Batania's finest against the Sturgeons of the North. There had been many battles and Vladimir was certainly not unprepared for this endeavor. Indeed, they were in fact outnumbered by the Northern Savages. But surely they could not meet the mights of the Batanians. The enemies barely had horsemen and the Batanians sure did. It seemed that the Batanian lines consisted mostly of archers and cavalry and little infantry. As such, Vladimir grew impatient. That was no line he wished to hold, for it was no line at all. They marched forward to meet the enemy in battle. The Sturgeons were not convinced of their attack, despite being the aggressors. They would soon regret striking against the Batanians. Vladimir went bravely into the fray, unafraid of what might transpire. The Sturgeons were not ready for this. They were expecting a line, a shield wall, fighting the cavalry that were causing chaos in their midst. Vladimir was part of the special tactics force of just himself, fighting alone against the flank of their shield wall. Distracting them, causing them to break rank. Confusion. It was a downfall for sure. There was no way the Sturgeons had expected this sort of behavior from a rogue warrior and for him to succeed. When their backs were turned, suddenly the arrow fire caught them when they least expected it. Caught between man, bow and horse, there was little they could do. Even their finest warriors could not stand up to Vladimir, heavily armored, fully kitted out with equipment and skill. His training had paid off. He was sustaining himself through the blood of his enemies throughout the battle. When they thought they'd gotten purchase on him, it was all but temporary. No damage would linger on Vladimir's body, for he was a mighty warrior, a mighty man. Vladimir was no longer the boy from a village. He was now a grown and trained soldier, hardened by war. It was undoubtedly remarkable. The skills that he had displayed, the power with which he had wielded. Vladimir was promoted to a commander. Now he could bring his kinsmen, his companions into battle. Truly impressive. Having grown to this rank, that man from so long ago had been assigned to assist him. The retinue now consisted of Vladimir and Tulul the swordsman. When he was perhaps given leave from his duties, then maybe he could go his own way to... And there Tulul joined him. Perhaps then he could go on his own way to gain more fighters along his side. To truly create the most elite of elite band of brothers. The enemy was everywhere. Not only was it the Sturgeons, but it was the Empire as well. But not the Empire that they usually fought, no. It was a different one. Multiple pronged attacks. This was not what Batania had been ready for. None of it. None of their men were ready. After the conquering of Landia, it was clear they were not organized at all. But they managed together to at least fight against the army striking at Remtoil Castle, led by none other than Emperor Lucon himself. It seemed the army was getting into a defensive position despite having initiated on the sieging army. Many cavalry were coming in, so perhaps that would help explain their reasoning. There were so many of them. 
Would this newish two-handed sword be of use against these mounted men? His rank now akin to that of a Batanian Fian hero. But did he have the skills to back up the rank of such? Perhaps not the raw firepower, but the battle will. The will to defeat any and all Imperial dogs in the name of Batania. Even as their men seemed impossible to fell, even this two-handed sword was not good enough for Vladimir's needs. And so the armies came clashing together. And without shield in hand, it was time to go forward. Using his newfound speed and strength, he would run around the small clumps of Imperial troops, hoping to crush through the defenses. Retreat was necessary though, as the enemies came even closer. And the enemy's backup proved impossible to defeat. The retreat for now was necessary. He needed to sustain himself on the blood of the enemies. The Batanians were being sent back. The Imperials rushing forward. Nivan told determination. Where was Tulu the swordsman in all this? Vladimir fell to the flurry of battle. What were the Batanians doing? They had the numbers, they had powerful troops, and yet they fought like a dog with its tail between its legs. Was this how true Batanians fought? True cowardice lost them the day. Vladimir was allowed to leave, but Tulul was not. Things were not looking so hot. Yo, yo, everybody! Yeah. Welcome to the next episode in Vladimir's Adventure, where we will now try to get even more money by doing ill-advised tournament battles with low health, like one should always do. Indeed, we must see how the practice, trained, and now capable older Vladimir handles himself in battle, mustn't we? Hmm, still covered in blood. Having grown a fine mustache and shaved some of the hair, he now reeks of strength and power. Oh yes. Can anybody hope to defeat a grown bloody man? Putting as much money on the line as possible, being one health away from defeat at all times. Oh well. Indeed, it was not a good move. For he was defeated. Blech. What a load of shit. Now, he, well, there's a lot of options here. A lot of men with incredible skills. This man had to have been the best archer I'd ever seen. A swordswoman of great capacity. A bowwoman of so many skilled men. And there was room for four. Well, Olawin the ill start. She was speaking to more than just Vladimir's sword arm. Despite her hefty price, she needed to be added. Munsol the Red seemed a capable old man, and he also needed to be paid for. Pelasaur Blacktooth, now he was also capable, and he also joined the ranks. And as such, multiple powerful new troops were added to the party. Now, they needed some equipment. Olo in the ill start, throwing and one-handed. Moons of the Red, throwing and one-handed. Pelisaur Blacktooth, mostly just one-handed. At least their necessary needed equipment was rather simple. Rudimentary equipment was required as well. And so they were all equipped with the same good armor. Mostly, and it wasn't all good. But they had what they needed. A one-handed weapon and a shield. Now, Vladimir needed to rejoin the army and hopefully the next person that he would join would understand where he was in the hierarchy. Luckily though, 
Sionan was left well enough alone, but Remtoil Castle had been lost. It seemed though that Lucon's army was thinking and Marinath may be the target. In the end though, it was not. Corrine was around, patrolling, and for some reason, there was now a fucking herd. Inexplicably, everybody was staying at Cyrenea for no reason. And so everybody would be recalled as nothing made fucking sense. He was forced to sell his horses as they suddenly teleported across the fucking map. What is going on here? Well, at the very least, he would then go over to Corrine and have a chat and join with her army now. Back to Corrine, the most auspicious leader he had served under. Unfortunately, he was no longer of the highest rank, and he could no longer get his companions to join in with him in the fray. <sighs> the day had gone so well to start, only dwindle, fail, so can cover Catastrophically. But once more an attempt to defeat Lucon would now occur. Into the fray once more, and finally this time it seemed that the Batanians were not gonna lie down like cowardly dogs. They were meeting the onslaught of cavalry head on. And Vladimir was ready. His spear was ready to take down these riders. Put them up on a platter for his allies. If only they could finish the job. Alas, no such luck right now. Perhaps the shield was just in the way. These cavalrymen had to be taken care of quick for they were the pulp. The bulk, the big powerful bulk. And there was one, Cataphract down. Difficult to slay when they were not riding around, but a big pokey stick was always a capable defeater. Cavalry, it was a throng, a mass, all aggressive and mad. So many horses and men. What was even going on? Time to charge it seemed. Into the fray! They could not lose this time! Although it seemed that Vladimir came at the wrong time, as now once more men charged after him with no resistance. Luckily, backup could be found, and the blood of his enemies would sustain him for another assault. Ugh. Even more enemies with even more deadly weapons. Not that that would work out well enough for the enemies. Did the Britannian stand a chance? This time it was so much closer. There were still cataphracts running around. But the noble, powerful infantry of the Britannians was striking hard against those cataphracts. And their archers were providing supporting fire. Indeed, teamwork and aggression were all on the rise. All things that they needed to win. Would it be enough? It was Vladimir's turn to go on the offensive. There were no big throngs. There were no big groups of enemies trying to come in, just archers who had no more arrows and didn't know what to do with their life except throw it away at Vladimir's hands. If they lost, it would not be Vladimir's fault. His strength and cunning was immeasurable in this battle. Even if he didn't defeat these men, he was keeping so many men away from his allies. Hmm. Even if some of those allies just came over to help him to then fall in battle themselves. But it was nothing that Vladimir could do. They did not have the same hunger. The same hunger for blood and battle. Luckily, Vladimir could take advantage of enemies being overly confident against other allies. It seemed there were still groups of enemies about. Whether they were trying to fight back or trying to flee, however, was still remaining to be seen. 
seemed that perhaps they had understood that the end was nigh. Down went Leosios, one of the lords of the empire, taken down by the mighty spear of Vladimir. Impaled even! But no, the Imperials would not give up. Multiple of their men still stood, but Vladimir was not stupid. He would not face them alone. The Batanians were brave and they would su succeed. Vladimir knew he had done enough. There was no way that they could lose this battle. They did it. Twelve men standing in the end. Vladimir had defeated 29 single-handed. And such it was. Thanks to Vladimir, the army won. But there was still much work that needed doing if they had hopes of taking back Remtol Castle and defeating the remainder of the Imperial's army. And they were powerful. Vladimir thought the campaign against the Vlandians had made them strong. But it had also made them weak. Whilst he wanted to rest, it seemed a criminal man needed his assistance. And sure enough, Vladimir was always up for beating up criminals for their blood. Although this time, it seemed he was alone. No assistance. Six assailants. Now this was more a test of Vladimir's mettle. Vladimir needed to rethink this. As these men could block for some reason. Luckily, he had some paper armor. Which meant that it emboldened his reproach. Approach! They felt his reproach. Their blades were not a match for Vladimir's power. Oh no. These gang leader bodyguards were thrown into the mud. Indeed, Vladimir had not even been paying attention. It was a businessman that needed his help to get rid of some thugs that had been doing him harm. And oh dear, the Northmen were fighting against those of Pendrea Castle, seeking to claim land from the Britannians when they were weaker. And for some reason, now he was all alone. Corrine's army had been fighting and he could not join the battle. What had happened? What had happened indeed? He could do nothing at all now. Just wait and see how the fighting would finish. Not well, it would seem. And so he found himself wandering the lands again. All alone for no reason. There was a man whose name had come up multiple times during his travels. Sign, a man who he would now join. Unfortunately, his companions were not able to follow him as he was no longer still at his highest chief rank. Hopefully, Corrine would be the only one to lead him to such dire straits. Whilst she was a woman that he was very inspired by, it seemed her judgment was lacking like her father's. Oh dear. Poacher scum had appeared. It had been some time since Vladimir was forced to deal with poacher scum. And indeed, he had been given a weapon with which he was not entirely comfortable. The room fire, or at least one on a stick. But Vladimir was determined to make it work. It was only against poachers after all, harming the farmlands of this fine village. He would reap them like he would rain. The throne axes were not much use. It was time to strike. To reap the poor evil poachers. And reap them he would. Slicing and dicing at their flesh. Little more than wheat indeed. His axes unfortunately did not reach the last poacher who was running for his life. 
Could he run faster than Vladimir? Pesel was one, he was fleeing, but Vladimir had his eye on him. Unfortunately, the man managed to escape. The Batanian towns were lively. The Batanian lords had made peace with all of their enemies, all at once. Quite a sight, quite a thing. Not something Vladimir agreed with. They lost a castle. They were humble. Vladimir was no longer just a little boy. No, he was a real man, grown up. He was not going to let this stupid ugly man tell him that he couldn't sit on this chair. And he certainly wouldn't let the Batanians tell him that peace could be made with these rampaging marauders in heavy metals. Once more he realized that the leaders of Batania had failed. He had needed to join someone else for battle, and it simply was not good enough. Fighting through the ranks was a slow process, but a necessary one for now. Doubts was clouding his thoughts though. Was there a better way? A better way to conquer four and make Batania even more powerful? Yes, there was. Soon Vladimir would grasp at that opportunity. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.